Can we lift our hands to heaven and bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Give him praise. Go ahead and exalt his name. The mighty one, the King of glory. Someone bless him. Ghana, lift your voice and exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are king. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why? of glory feel this place just want to be with you just want to be with you King of glory Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will move upon us. Move upon us so mightily tonight. Let closed doors over destinies be open tonight. Father, heal the sick in this place tonight. Deliver the oppressed in this place tonight. Rewrite the stories of the destinies of men tonight. Lift those who have been downtrodden tonight. And we decree and declare as a people and on behalf of this nation that you remain exalted and to you be all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Shout a loud believing amen. Hallelujah. Is it alright if I ask you to look left and right and give someone a warm salutation tonight? Go ahead. Blessings of grace, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Tell them you remain lifted forever, lifted forever, blessed forever, walking under open doors and open heavens. Hallelujah. Thank you again, Ghana, for this opportunity. I want to honor sincerely His Eminence and the First Lady. I'd like us to please honor the Archbishop one more time. Give him a big God bless you. Thank you. We sincerely honor you, sir. Honor you, ma. Hallelujah. And um, I'm aware that there are many men and women of God in this place, those connected directly to this ministry and those who have come around to grace this meeting. I honor you as touching what you represent in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And to our dignitaries, a number of people, um, thank you so much. It's an honor to have met and exchange pleasantries very briefly when I came in um, government officials politicians we honor you as touching what you represent and it's a good thing for politicians to be in the house of God hallelujah praise the name of the Lord are you ready for tonight let the devil hear you are you ready for tonight Yes means yes to open doors. Yes means yes to liftings. Yes means yes to fresh fire. Yes means yes to speed. Yes means yes to advancement. I prophesy it over your life already in the name of Jesus. He who died and rose again, 
may God rewrite the narrative of your life tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to do something very prophetic. Two things. Remember, I requested yesterday that everyone here, you come with your prayer request. And so if for any reason you do not have your prayer request, let's take a minute or two and I want you to pen down as an act of faith. I'm going to be standing to pray and to call upon the God who answers prayer. You will watch with wonder what the power of God can do. Don't be afraid of the things that you write for the Bible declares. It says, and this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now, here's how we'll do it so that this place does not become rowdy. How many of you have your request? I want you to wave it. Let me see you wave your request. Thank you. Now, may I please request from the ushers or authorized officials that whilst I teach, let me request that you pass your request to the last person by the aisle left or right just to organize the receiving. And uh, don't worry, nobody is reading your request. So once you're done writing... Perhaps you wrote in fear at home. Now you are in an atmosphere of faith. You can still add to your list because the devil is a liar tonight. In the name of Jesus. Make sure you write. The Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. So let me request that the ushers move around. There are lots of people. But grace for you as you walk around so that you can pick the request. So help the ushers by passing it to the last person at your left or right so that it's easy for them to pick it up and then um, it doesn't interrupt the service now that we're beginning the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. And for those who are following by way of television, following online, you can participate. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. We're people of faith here in Ghana, believing the Lord to do great things even in this moment where he's about to swing open even ancient doors. That every door that has been closed over our lives and our destinies, there is a sound from heaven that is about to descend upon this ground. And in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you that all doors open unto you. You believe that, shout a loud believing amen. amen. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible says, Revelation 3 and verse 8. It says, I know thy works. Then he says, Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And he says, No man can shut it. When you read verse 7 and verse 8, he says, I am, he, give us verse 7 please. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing saith he that is holy and he that is true. He that hath the key of David. And the Bible says on the strength of that key, when he opens, no man can shut. There are doors that when men open, men can shut. There are doors that when men close, men can open. But whoever is the holder of the key of David, the Bible says he sustains an ability to open a door that no man can shut. I have set before you an open door, he says, verse 8. And then he says, no man can shut. Hallelujah. Now we're going to discuss very briefly the subject of open doors. And prophetically, this was the word that God gave us as a ministry this year. And so I have studied extensively and I've done a lot of teachings around the concept of open doors. And I understand a bit about the mystery of open doors and as a charge before we get to the ministry of the spirit tonight i want to really open our eyes to understand the dynamics of walking in the reality of open doors i'm going to be saying a few things about doors and then i request that you please lend me your rapt undivided attention because the strength of um the results that we command in the kingdom is based upon the knowledge and the understanding of scripture that we have. God's method has always been his word. His method to lift his word. His method to bless his word. 
his method to elevate his word. Every time God's power is about to move, his word will first move. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, in the beginning, the Bible says, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was without form. Tohu wa bohu is the Hebrew expression. Confusion and chaos. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Then the Bible says, And God said, The Hebrew expression says, And Elohim said, Light be. When the word went forth, the Bible says, There was. It is only what God says that his power brings to pass. Are we together now? The manifestation of the power of God is at the mercy of the word of God. If the word of God does not go forth, the power of God has no ministry. Because the assignment of the power of God is to bring confirmation and to bring expression, manifestation to the speakings of God. Genesis 21 from verse 1, profound scripture. The Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Not as she wanted, God visits only as he has said. God only does that which he says. So the way to get the power of God to move is to get his word to move. Because when God says it, now his power has an assignment. Are we together? So let's talk about the concept of doors. Three thoughts that I want to share with us very quickly. A door is an authorized system of access. Very basic definitions that I want to bring just to guide our understanding. A door to an average layperson is a wooden or metallic, you know, construction that midwives rooms and so on and so forth. And while that is not wrong, the essence, the whole idea of a door is that a door is a, an authorized system of access. Remember yesterday, I did tell us that if you jump into an individual's house through the fence, you are in the house, but you are not called a visitor and you are not welcome. Why? Because you followed an unauthorized access point. And so in as much as you are inside the house, you are not welcome. You are called a thief, not a visitor. For the simple reason that you did not follow the door. Are we together now? Doors are authorized systems for access. Access to anything. Opportunities, dimensions, realms. Doors are the midwives between yesterday and tomorrow. Even in the regulation of time. The moment it is 12 midnight... A door opens and when that door opens today immediately becomes yesterday are we together now yesterday only happens when the door of tomorrow opens then you call it today then you call today yesterday without the opening of doors there is no motion this is very important another thought about doors doors control motion doors control movement I've followed a lot of doors since I came to Ghana. And every closed door I met forced me to stop my speed until the doors were open. No matter how fast you're walking or moving, when you get to a closed door, you will have to stop. Closed doors can impede and restrict motion. Are we learning? So doors control mo motion. Doors limit and restrict access doors limit and restrict access when people want to stop you from getting into a room perhaps for official reasons they may not necessarily line up security people here and there they just restrict access and that's it hallelujah now watch this the next thing i want you to know about doors is that this is a powerful revelation doors can open and doors can close hmm. doors can open and doors can close this is a fact that the bible agrees with this is a fact that science agrees with this is a fact that even you know 
architecture they build doors to be able to open and close are we together now please pay attention doors can be circumstances doors can be human entities doors can be spirits please i want you to follow very carefully doors are not just limited to metallic or wooden objects doors excuse me can be circumstances doors i've stretched myself so much forgive me for just coughing while i preach hallelujah <coughs> praise the name of the lord all right so let's get to business doors can be circumstances human entities or spirits <coughs> an example of this is jesus himself he said i am the door jesus called himself not just a savior john 10 7 i am the door is someone learning <coughs> all doors are closed by default now please pay attention we're building something very important all doors are closed by default that means that not all closed doors are demonic. Not all closed doors are satanic. Please listen. When you buy a product, one of the ways that you know that it is authentic is that it comes wrapped or it comes closed. Am I right on that? In fact, when you buy a product... Oh, he's bringing my water. Okay, thank you. When, when you buy a product and it is already opened there are people who because of their reputation where do i keep it okay just keep it down thank you they ask you that if for any reason you buy a product and it is already open they say return it for a refund am i am i right on that because closed doors sometimes are seals of authenticity so when we're dealing with the idea of open doors, it's important for you to know that your assignment is not to open every closed door because there are doors that are best left closed. For instance, like I said yesterday, the door to the prison. You don't want to open the door to the prison because what follows after is bondage. Are we together now? So all doors come closed by default. And that is for several reasons, both good and bad. Doors closed or, or sealed doors increase the value of a product. <coughs> doors protect and doors preserve. Now, but closed doors sometimes, and this is the context of our discussion, can be deliberate hindrances to stop you from making progress. Closed doors can be deliberate hindrances to stop your progress. That means every time you stand in front of a closed door, ladies and gentlemen, your first assignment is not an attempt to open it. Your first assignment is to discern why the door was closed. Are we together? If the door was closed by God as a system of mercy to keep you safe, then you keep it closed. But if that door is a demonic manipulation to stop your progress, then you now can begin to engage the keys I'm about to show you that forces any closed door closed by the devil to be opened. And while I'm saying this in the name of Jesus, God is going to be handing to someone the secret not just to open doors but to keep them open. Because if the doors open for you and close for your children, it was a bad bargain. It has to open and then remain open. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Are we together? I want to give you tonight very quickly and then we'll get to prayer. Four spiritual keys that are responsible for opening closed doors. Every time doors are closed over a man, 
over a people, over a nation, over a territory, there are spiritual forces that we engage that will compel those doors to be opened. And this is our assignment tonight. Number one, are you ready now? The first way doors are opened is by the use of correct keys. The first way we open doors according to scripture is by the use of correct keys. Every time you stand before a closed door, the first thing you need is the right key. Not a key, the right key. You can have a key, but if it is the wrong key, that door will not open. Are we together? All of us here come from homes. And for many of us, our homes are made of multiple rooms. And do you know that midwifing all the rooms are doors? And to open all those doors, every door has its unique key. There are times that you can be in the house. You are in the house, but you cannot access certain rooms. Because the key to open that room is not there. So although you are in the house, perhaps you want to open a store somewhere and then you do not have the key you are in the house but you are still restricted to open every room in the house you will need to have the individual keys that open the rooms and how many of you know that the keys are not all the same there are keys that are cards there are keys that are metallic objects that you swing left or right a number of times there are keys that can be your iris you know whatever kind of technology your finger, whatever it is. So it's important for you to use the correct key. Many believers stand before closed doors, closed financial doors, closed spiritual doors, because they do not understand that doors do not respond to sentiments. Watch this. As simple as a key is, you can put it in your pocket, but if that key is missing, you can stand in front of a giant door from morning till night. Have you misplaced the key to your car before? Or the key to your house? You still recall the experience. You will argue around and shout and yet the door does not respond. You will be angry and say, it's three hours I've been waiting outside. And yet it does not respond. But the moment you bring the right key, even if you do not speak, the door opens. So the first way that doors open is to find the right key and ladies and gentlemen in scripture every time we talk about keys we talk about the body of spiritual knowledge allocated or connected to the results that we desire you see the way the kingdom functions is that every dimension of possibility and reality in the spirit is controlled by a key a body of knowledge prosperity lifting breakthrough advancement influence favor are we together longevity liftings all of these are possibilities the kingdom is a compendium of infinite possibilities but every possibility you desire to see manifest in your life is governed by a body of knowledge the bible simply calls it marvelous light apostle i desire to rise I have many people who can help me in Ghana, but nobody wants to attend to me. Favor is a possibility in the kingdom, but there is a body of knowledge that releases you into that realm of possibility. Are we together now? In a house, still using that illustration, there's usually the living room or multiple rooms, you know, the parlor, the kitchen, bedrooms, and so on and so forth. And every one of these places are controlled by keys that open the doors. And if you want to use, say, go to the restroom and it is locked and you do not have the key. Even if you have the key to the kitchen, it does not automatically open up the restroom. So just because you have found the key to a certain dimension of spiritual reality, it does not mean it will cover for another area of deficiency. Are we together? Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11, Jesus is teaching and here's what he says. It has been given unto you 
to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven they are called mysteries these are the secrets ladies and gentlemen that empower ordinary men to live enviable destinies you are as strong as the keys that you have you are as strong as the light that you have so isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise it says shine not because you are tired of staying down longevity of time does not automatically translate to victory it says you will only arise and shine because your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you you arise and you shine because your light has come when light comes in the area of finances then lack and want dies when light comes in the area of influence then you stop being a mediocre immediately when light comes in the area of advancement delay and retrogression dies immediately your assignment therefore as a believer is not just to hope and to wish for realms and possibilities but to become a meticulous student searching for light searching for the spiritual keys that put you in command hear me please ladies and gentlemen dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your having the keys of the kingdom now there is only one key to the kingdom it is a person the key is jesus the only key to the kingdom but when you are in the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom there's only one key to the kingdom jesus said this about himself i am the way truth and life then he says no man cometh to the father but by me but now that you are in the kingdom your efficiency depends on the level of spiritual illumination that you have my question for you tonight ladies and gentlemen is how many spiritual keys do you not have if i list for you the various possibilities that are represented in your prayer request can you tell me with intelligence and with precision the spiritual keys that are responsible for them for instance many desire to see the favor of god in their life but they cannot articulate with intelligence spiritual intelligence the forces that are responsible for bringing favor the bible says in proverbs 13 15 good understanding bringeth favor it says but the way of the transgressor is hard exodus 3 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty psalms 44 and verse 3 they got not the land in possession by their own sword it says neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and arm the light of thy countenance because thou hast shown a favor towards them you cannot excel by luck nobody wins the olympic by luck it is upon the strength of knowledge that we excel in this kingdom if you're following please say amen. amen and you see let me tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen when light enters you it affects many things in your life among them the way you speak the way you speak is a product of the kind of light i think that should be isaiah chapter 8 and verse 2 i hope that i got that scripture well let's try it and see uh no the bible says and if they do not speak after this manner it says there is no light in them there is a way that carriers of light speak hallelujah thank you 820 thank you it says if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them there is a way people speak when they do not have light we are the defeated ones that is the language of a man who has no light it is good for others except me that is the language of a man who has no light let me tell you how those who have light speak let the redeemed of the lord say so that when men say there is a casting down men who have light decree and declare that there is a lifting up is it in your bible that the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of the lord is the strength of my light this is how those who have light speak hmm. hallelujah yes sir 
He said, declare ye that thou might test be justified. Possess of, of light. Speak in a way that may... It's, it's not arrogance. I'm not ju just talking about blindly speaking. No. The light. Number two, very quickly. What is the second key that opens doors? Is God helping someone already? The second spiritual force that is responsible for swinging closed doors open. Man of God, hear me. This may be the key that your ministry needs at this point. Businessman, hear me. Politician, hear me. This may be the key. This key has a track record of opening closed doors. It's called the force of prayer. The force of prayer. Ah, prayer sustains a unique ability to release the power of God over any situation. Ghana, hear me. Prayerlessness is the highest demonstration of pride. Let me repeat myself again. Prayerlessness is the highest demonstration of pride. It's a declaration of independence that you are telling God you are sufficient and his assistance is unnecessary. He spake a parable to the end that men always ought to pray. Luke 18 and 1. And not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. James 5.13 Is any man afflicted? The Bible says let him pray. Mark 11.24 Verily, verily, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, your Bible says, when ye pray, Believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them. A prayerless Christian truly is a powerless Christian. Powerless by every definition possible. The force of prayer. Acts chapter 12 please from verse 1. So here is a story about Herod who stretched forth his hands, the Bible says, to vex certain Jews. And then the Bible says that John... James was beheaded and he saw that it pleased the Jews and then he caught Peter. So when they caught James, the church kept quiet and said, no problem. I'm sure God would do whatever he has to do. And truly, James died. Now watch this. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. Let me pause for a minute and explain that. Every time Satan touches an aspect of your life and you keep quiet, he proceeds further. <clears throat> Are we together? He touches your finances and he says, all right, it's just the way the economy is. He proceeds further. Every attack Satan launches initially is the least he intends to launch. He waits for your aggression or your carelessness to govern his continuity. So you see things going wrong in your life and you say, no, I'm, I'm sure that things will just find a way of working themselves out. He's empowered to proceed further. Let's continue very quickly. The Bible now says that when they caught Peter, they put him in prison, delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Can you imagine that level of bondage? Intending that after Easter, they would bring him forth to the people. Watch the power of prayer. Let's read together, Ghana. Ready? One to read. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Uh -huh. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. The result. When Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, while Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, the keepers before the door, who kept the prison. Uh -huh. Behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in prison and he smote Peter by the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell from his hands. Next verse. The Bible says, And the angel said unto him, Gird yourself, bind your sandals. So he did. And he said, Cast thy garment and follow me. Watch this, verse 9. The Bible says, And he followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel he thought he was having a vision 10 
I like this. I like this. When he was past the first and the second door, these are doors. So he was already free, but he was still in prison. Just because the chains have left does not mean you are free. Provided the door is still closed, you are still in bondage. It's just a better version of the bondage to be without chains. But it is the absence of chains. And then the door opens. That is what spells complete liberty. The Bible says he passed the first door and the second door. Are we together? Then they came to a mysterious door called the iron gate. And the Bible says that is the door that leads to the city. Ghana, hear me. There are gates and doors in the spirit that opens up to the city. This is the door that controls influence. If that door is open, the city must hear you. There are people who have had certain doors open, but the door that leads to the city has not opened over your business. Has not op that is the reason why you can be productive in the midst of those who need you, but they do not see you because spiritually the door has not yet been opened. You believe what I'm telling you. You don't just step into a territory and excel in business and excel in career. There are doors that open men to the realms of influence. The Bible says he passed the first door, the second door. Then he came to an iron gate that opens to the city. Have you found the door that opens to your city? And have you forced it to open for you? Can I tell you? When the door of the city opens, everybody within that city will be compelled to acknowledge what you represent. Whether politically, whether spiritually, I'm showing you the mysteries of the kingdom. Unbelievers know this. They never step into a territory and casually begin to walk. They consult by divination. What are the forces and what are the doors that must be open? And they swing those doors open and they step in. You may not like what they represent, but there's nothing you can do. The door is open already. Believers must be people of spiritual intelligence. Hallelujah. I hope you know that the Red Sea was not a river. It was a door. It was a door that under a certain condition opened up and became walls. And the nation of Israel followed through that door. And the Egyptians trying to follow through the same door the door closed back as if nothing happened. Let me speak to someone in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead. The Lord sent me here tonight. That door that needs to be opened to the city. I call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind. And I decree and declare that door opens tonight. Shout a believing amen. That door opens tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Prayer. When we pray according to scripture, it produces tremendous power. Elijah is an example of efficient, effectual, fervent prayer. The Bible says he prayed that there be no rain over a period of three and a half years. Believers, please hear me. We control the happenings around our life, the happenings around our territory by understanding the prophetic dimension of prayer. It says, has thou commanded thy morning? I vowed a vow in my life that I will never let things happen in my life and then I become a consequent recipient of things that have been finished in the spirit. I must participate over anything that my destiny is involved with. Nobody will meet and conclude anything about my destiny without my presence. No, sir. No, sir. Man of God, don't fold your arms and watch your ministry go down. Learn to hold on to the four horns of the altar and determine your possibilities. Do you believe what you're hearing? I'm challenging fathers, mothers, leaders. When you sit down and allow things to just happen by themselves, it's like kicking a car and firing on all four cylinders without holding the wheels you will drive yourself to derision and peril as for me i have a covenant with god through the power of prayer among many other forces that i in partnership with the spirit of god 
are the principal determinants of my reality and my future. And anything God does not agree with and I do not agree with cannot, should not, will not happen. Do you believe this? Believers, hear me, you are not weak. No. Prayer is a secret that turns ordinary men to become mighty. In Luke chapter 18, the Bible gives us a parable of a woman. It talks about a judge who does not fear God nor regard men. May you never meet such a man in your life. Say amen. A judge that does not fear God. A judge that does not regard men. Who then does he listen to? And the Bible says there was a weak, helpless woman who came to such a judge and said, avenge me my adversary. And the man would not listen to her. And she said, I may not have the power to change your will, but there is something I can do. I can insist. And the Bible says after a while, verse 5, that yet this widow troubled me. That means that she had a way of boring into his will until he finally, he became weary. That is what prayer can do. You may be weak, but learn to hold on to the four horns of the altar. Father, my children will not fall. My children, I will not give birth to armed robbers. I will not give birth to prostitutes. Sheka paskuti abata. Prophetic intercessors, hear me. Rise up over Ghana. Rise up over Ghana. Intercessors over Africa. Rise up over Africa. Take charge of the spiritual climate over your territory. Hmm. Define what comes in and what goes out. Hallelujah. That you can stay the power of darkness and say, Thus far have you come and no further shall you go. When we pray with understanding, we command power, even power that opens doors. The Bible says when Peter discerning a lady who had the spirit of divination, the apostle Paul, he took that spirit out of the damn cell and as a result, they were brought, blackmailed and kept in prison. But my Bible, your Bible says at midnight. Rather than complaining and grumbling at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Then they switched to another level. They now began to praise. So loud the prisoners heard them. This time around, ladies and gentlemen, Prayer with praise. It was not angels that came. Elohim rose up from his throne. Heaven is his throne. The earth is footstool. My Bible says that he came and rattled the door of the prison. When God came, Acts chapter 16, the Bible says there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison, my God, when power and force comes, it is not whether you have a key or not. The foundation that the door was built upon is uprooted. The Bible says the foundations of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors, all the doors, financial doors, all the doors, doors of your influence, not some. When God comes in response to prayer and praise, it's not one door that will be opened. The doors will not be open one by one. Your Bible says all the doors were open. All the doors. While you are sitting, I want you prophetically to begin to list the doors that must open. Go ahead. Shalika paroska ziakata. All doors open. Someone is prophesying. Doors to exploits in ministry. Efata. Be open. Doors to your influence. Doors to your relevance. Someone is praying. In the name of Jesus Christ. All doors were open. All doors were open. All doors were open. Ghana, all doors can open. Depending on the force you introduce to the prison. All doors can open. Number three, very quickly, what is the third force that opens doors? Are you ready? It's called the force of favor. The force of favor. 
the force of favor my bible says that joseph was bound in the prison sincere but still bound then it says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of the dungeon you see when jesus was speaking in matthew 7 and verse 7 and 8 he says ask and it shall be given unto you he says seek and you shall find then he says knock and it shall be opened so when a door is closed one of the ways that you open especially if you do not have the key is to knock but the trouble with knocking is that the person at the other side must like you enough to open it if the person at the other side of the door is not interested in opening you can knock Ghana we're learning then Jesus gives a very interesting parable Luke's synoptic account of the same scripture he says there was a man and this man had visitors that suddenly came to his house in the night and he did not have bread enough for them then the Bible says he went to the house of a friend not a stranger and he said friend please open the door and give me three loaf another friend has come and I do not have enough then the friend told him I'm sorry it's late already my children are with me in bed Luke chapter 11 number 6 he says um, I have nothing to give him verse 7 the friend now says trouble me not why the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed and then he says verse 8 that though he will not rise to give him because he's his friend yet because of his importunity he will rise up and give him not three that he requested as many as he needed but notice that entire story was about friends both the visitor and the one to give the bread and the one knocking were friends when it has to do with the favor of God please Ghana hear me you may have heard me say that in this kingdom who hates you does not matter don't waste your time on those who hate you Jesus is hated Satan is hated anyone in between will be hated so that's not a problem but who likes you who likes you that is what can define your possibility watch this the king hates one person and she's she's kicked out of the palace and the king looks at a village girl called Hadassah Esther and she becomes queen immediately ladies and gentlemen there are people you cannot cast away there are people who even though they may be believers or unbelievers the position they stand as gatekeepers and God respects what they represent you cannot pray them away the way to pass through those doors is that God gives you favor with them the Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord he makes even his enemies there are certain enemies you cannot cast away how do you cast Pharaoh out of Egypt Joseph if you must rise Pharaoh must like you praying that Pharaoh leaves Egypt is a wasted prayer a wiser prayer is God touch the heart of Pharaoh give him a dream that only me can solve so that I can get to the palace Is someone learning yes sir believe me there are men on earth that have earned a status in the spirit as gatekeepers God honors their position the dream that Pharaoh had did not come from the devil the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had did not come from the devil watch this Pharaoh in I mean Joseph interpreted three people's dreams two of them left him in the prison but when he interpreted the king's dream, he stopped remaining in the prison. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. Congratulations, he remained there. The baker, congratulations. But when God wanted to lift him, he gave the king. You are where you are because of the people whose dreams you are interpreting. When God wants to help you, there are kings that he will put. I, believe me, this is not motivation. It is how God's system works. 
one person who can send for you in Ghana and say I like this family that's it doesn't matter who likes it or not it's, it's over don't look at everybody and say I don't need men the only person I need is God let me tell you this if what you are saying is acknowledging the sovereignty of God you are right but as far as the dynamics of the way the cosmos works when God wants, if you fight, there are men that if you fight, you go down forever. I can tell you. Listen carefully. This is how God works. There are some of you right now, by reason of this teaching, go and find the top five people who have contributed immensely in your life and send them a text and say, I came to church and I was taught the wisdom that commands favor. I want to appreciate you for giving me a house, for giving me promotion. And that what you are praying for today, the answer is on earth with a man. The job, the business, the contract is not in heaven. It's on earth now, right now in Ghana or around the globe. This is how powerful men are. If God respected men, don't despise men. Believers do not know the power that is contained in man. This mysterious creation that God built by himself. To the point that Luke 2.52 tells us that Jesus, preparing himself for an excelling life, increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor. Help me Ghana. With God and with men. Let me show you how favor with men works. Jesus is about to have a triumphant entry. And he tells his disciples, go to a place that the roads, the streets divide. And you will see a cold that no man, not even the owner, had ridden upon. He said, lose it and bring it. And if any man asks you, tell him the master had need of it. If Jesus did not have favor, he would have died on the ground, not the cross. The owner of that cold would have held him and turned him into pieces. I hope you know Jesus could die. When favor is at work in your life, there are three representations of favor. I'm not teaching, I'm just touching. Number one, unusual kindness. Number two, unusual access. Number three, unusual acceptance. If this tripartite manifestations of favor does not happen, it is not favor working in your life. Let me repeat it again. Unusual kindness. That's what was shown Joseph when he was in prison. Number two, unusual access. Number three, unusual acceptance. Don't say it's because I'm from the Volta region. Don't say it's because I'm from this place. It's not true. It is that the, you see, what is on your head is what defines what is around your life. It says, thou anointest my head with oil. But I know what is on my head by looking at what happens on my cup. If my cup is empty, it is not the cup. It is not the job. It is not the business. The business, the job is a report card. It is telling us what is on your head. Are we learning? Hmm, Ghana is quiet. Should I take that, that the devil is in trouble? Say favor. Ladies and gentlemen, many people have taught favor in the body of Christ. Unfortunately, they've taught favor wrongly. One of the wrongest teachings on favor is that it is unmerited. It is not accurate. There is a dimension of favor that is unmerited. That is favor that comes as a result of the saving grace of God. But every other dimension of favor is merited. What then is the value of knowledge? You can program favor intentionally. Are we together? The Bible says good understanding procured favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. There are many forces that control favor. One of them is value. Another is relationships. Number three, favor provoking prayers. These are all forces that work together to bring favor. And I'm praying for someone. Can I tell you, do not downplay what favor does in the life of a man, a nation, a businessman. A preacher as a man of God with all due respect and not to flatter the favor of God can rest upon you and one person can come into your life and say God has mandated me to hold your hand as you serve that you will never have to beg for bread so that you will serve God with the dignity of kingdom integrity 
everybody is a giver if they don't give you it's not that they cannot give is that what should make them give is not on you everybody is a giver listen there are people today giving millions and billions of to causes and they have cousins and relatives that need as little as a thousand dollars and they will never get it yet the man is donating money across the globe don't blame them it is that what will make them give to you is not yet on your head this is why you came to church tonight that something from heaven in the name of jesus the son of the living god will rest upon your life and begin to compel men by the spirit to bless you i'm saying this from the depth of my spirit ladies and gentlemen please hear me i submit to you by the authority of scripture and with every sense of humility this is how god lifted this man you are seeing who loves you matters when kings love you today by the privilege of god's grace i have stood before presidents i have stood before kings these are not you don't get there just by luck i'm not a politician no so when i begin to pray favor for you if it is not working in your life don't stand in pride humble yourself and open up your spirit and receive a genuine grace for favor that will rewrite your life in the name of jesus christ how do i know favor is on you hear me the proof of favor is not money you don't need favor to have money you need wisdom and value and productivity the proof of favor is that you have the loyalty of men this is the greatest proof of favor when the favor of God rests upon you like Gideon you will blow a trumpet and 33,000 people will come out from everywhere yes sir yes sir man of God that is the grace that must come on you no matter how sincere you are nations will not come and gather to hear you just because you have something to say there is a grace that compels a generation to hear your voice. It is a favor of God. Can I request that you lay your hands on your head in one minute and say, Father, let favor that can change my life rest upon me. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Ghana is praying. Those following online, God is doing something serious here at the Impact Conference. Favor. Destiny actualization is highly man dependent, not just God dependent, man dependent. Who likes you can rewrite the narrative in your life. Preachers, pray in one minute. Let your favor rest upon me. Let your favor rest upon me. Shaliske breke parasko bena hashena makata. Kratike beleketa. Come on, let a politician pray. Let a businessman pray. Let a man of God pray. The proof of favor is that you have access to the loyalty of men. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let me give you the fourth one. I sense a strong anointing staring up in this place right now. I sense a strong anointing. Do you believe what you are hearing? Ghana, hear me by the authority of scripture. I'm assuring you, if you believe what I'm teaching you tonight and receive of the impartations that come, I stand upon the integrity of scripture to tell you, you will marvel and wonder at how your life becomes after tonight. Let me give you the fourth key and then we begin to pray. Can you take it higher for me? Oh, 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 your help has come. Oh, 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 your help has come. Oh, 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 your rising has come. Oh, 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 your rising has come. Oh, 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 
advancement has come oh, 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 oh. lifting has come I'm not singing I'm prophesying he said bring me a mistral and as the mistral was played the hand of the Lord came upon him and he said you shall not see wind you shall not see rain and yet your valley shall be filled with water doors can open doors can open depending on the forces that you engage doors can open can i hear me doors can open political doors can open spiritual doors can open financial doors can open depending on the forces that you engage please pay attention and let me give you the last one there are many more but we stop at the fourth so that we pray ah for someone here is your word when the lord turn again the captivity of zion when the lord turn it i don't know who i'm speaking to but when the lord turn again the captivity of zion it says we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and they said among the hidden the lord has done great things for them it says the lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad then it says turn again our captivity like the streams of the negative The fourth key that controls open doors. Can I hear me? Man of God, hear me. Great man, hear me. It is true that prophecy is upon you that doors should open. But I'm showing you the keys. The fourth key that opens doors is the prophetic. The prophetic has a unique ability to open doors. Please lend me your attention for the next five minutes. I want to show you how the prophetic opens doors. I admitted something in the morning while teaching at the business and leadership session. And I want to say it here. Unfortunately, the prophetic in Africa and world over has gone through many shades of imbalances, many shades of corruption, the prophetic has suffered on many sides, been bastardized sadly to the point that if you mention the prophetic now, there are people who just shut down. And they, the idea of the prophetic, especially in Africa right now, is as though it is a campaign of jokers who don't know what they are doing, but it is not true. There might be people who have gotten it wrong, and our assignment is not to condemn but to begin to call in love that God purifies the prophetic ministry and brings the prophetic ministry to a point of authenticity and accuracy void of 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 carelessness void of compromises and all of these things that are a disdain not just to the prophetic practice it is unfortunate but I have to admit that some of the practices that have happened across the African soil especially in the name of the prophetic it's not a story to be told as far as believers are concerned. It is something I'm even embarrassed as a man of God to admit. However, it does not fail or it does not mean that the ministry of the prophetic should be thrown away. A generation that ignores the prophetic will pay the price with their lifetime. It is God's system. It will never change, even in the midst of corruption. The right approach is to teach correct in love and hope that God will begin to purify the conscience the practices of many and if you are here hear me you are called into the prophetic ministry in any dimension trust God for grace and consecration to stop playing games with God's people to stop playing games on the altar and be serious with the assignment God has given you 
if you do not know what to do seek mentorship from responsible people with character and integrity so that they guide you on how to do ministry well we must redefine some of this joke that happens around on stage to the point that every time we look at men of God we generalize and believe everybody's a joker there are people who have not bowed to Baal there are sincere people who love Jesus discipline with integrity and take God's people seriously having said that now let me talk about the prophetic you ignore the prophetic you will never rise the prophetic has a unique ministry it is one of the ministries that midwife the rising of man I said it while I was teaching in the morning Jesus himself your Jesus walked under a close heaven for 30 years even though he was God incarnate it took the prophetic to open his heavens for 30 years there were three prophets in total that Jesus met to be able to finish his assignment number one as a baby Simeon the prophet Anna the prophetess and then John the prophet who you call the Baptist to the point that John said I am not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe he said suffer it to be so it is an ordinance not even me can violate it can I tell you ladies and gentlemen you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor must be conferred upon you by another Are we together? I am a product of prophecy. I am a product of the prophetic speakings of men. I respect prophecy. I am a beneficiary of the prophetic. Some of you have come from backgrounds where based on the factors that are available for your rising, you may never rise. It will take the prophetic to speak you into the place of destiny. It is an uncommon advantage we have in the kingdom can be abused but can be used properly are we together the prophetic is powerful every time there was economic problem within the nation the solution was always prophetic Samaria was bankrupt of help women were eating their children to eat your child means to eat your vision it doesn't just mean to eat a human being when you eat your tomorrow, you have eaten your child. When you eat that which brings continuity, you have eaten your child. And the Bible says because of the nature of lack and want, even responsible mothers ate their children. But when a prophet showed up, this is all he said, by this time, tomorrow not everybody can say by this time tomorrow no there is a throne that must authorize you from heaven otherwise you will talk nonsense and make a fool of yourself but believe me ladies and gentlemen there are people who have a mandate from God to speak over nations and they can say by this time tomorrow and when he said that there was some fellow who looked at the prophetic and mocked the prophetic there are two people who paid serious prices for mocking the prophetic in the Bible. One was a set of children who laughed at Elisha. Number two was the man upon whom the king leaned. He said, no, even if God will open the windows of heaven, might this thing be? And he said, you will see it, but you will not eat of it. He died at the gate that led to abundance. When the sons of the prophet wanted to contend for expansion, the Bible says while they were felling the trees, the axe head that one had fell. And he said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. When the prophet came, he said, where fell it? And he threw a stick and the axe head, the situation that looked like it would never, never have a solution, began to come up again. The third instance of the prophetic was that a woman whose husband was a prophet. Now, I don't know why this one happened that way. I don't know what kind of prophet he was. That he got into debt. I'm sure the man died out of depression. Because the debtors came, the creditors came to carry his children as a collateral. And the woman ran to the prophet. 
I don't know what to do about my situation, but I hear you're a man of God. He said, what do you have in your house? He said, nothing except a little cruise. And he said, that's it. And he prophesied. He said, go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. She borrowed vessels, turned the oil there. He says, now you go and sell it. Pay your debt and leave off the rest. There was somebody called Saul, the son of Kish. The Bible says the donkey of Kish was missing. For three days, they kept going around. Some of you have been going around searching for what the prophetic can cheaply bring to your life. After three days, they became weary. They said, this donkey, I don't know where it went to. And they said, we have an idea. Instead of continuing in pride and failure, repeating failure again and again, there is a holy man of God. There is a prophet called Samuel. The word of the Lord does not fall upon his mouth. They carried a seed and went to that man. Watch this. Uh, prophets those days did not come out carelessly like this. You only saw them once in a while. But if for any reason you collided with one, that would be the end of it. They literally were like gods in the flesh. And as soon as Saul saw Samuel, Samuel looked at him and said, Go up and I will tell you what is in your heart. And he gets up and he says, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? You came to solve the problem of a missing donkey, but you did not know that it was an orchestration to launch you into your prophetic destiny. Watch this. Three signs the prophet gave the man. Number one, as soon as he encountered the prophetic, restoration happened. He said, the donkey you have been looking for is not missing. You only don't know how to find it. The moment Saul encountered Samuel on his own, the donkey started going back home. What you call challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. Number two, you who went alone to meet me, as you are returning, you are going to see three men all of them holding two loaves of bread as if they do not know what to do with it the bible says they will salute you and they will give it to you say honor honor always happens to you when you encounter the prophetic and then the bible says which you should receive of them and then number three that you will come to the garrison of the philistines and the hand of god will rest so mightily upon you you will begin to prophesy when you encounter the authentic prophetic ministry among the many things that happen is that there are restorations perhaps i'm speaking to a man of god perhaps i'm speaking to someone who like samson you have lost your glory it doesn't matter why things have gone away your, you used to be vibrant but now as it stands everything around you is a closed door god has sent me tonight by the spirit of grace to let you know that though weeping endures for a night Ghana hear me under a certain spiritual condition things can change doors can open men can rise destinies can emerge why are we here tonight Ghana number one we are here to celebrate the God who opens doors that no man can shut. Why are we here tonight, Ghana? We are here to learn the forces that control open doors. Why are we here, Ghana? You are here to become a first-hand participant, a first-hand beneficiary of these forces in your own life so that you will not go back with a hearsay you will say, I have tasted and I have seen for myself that God opens doors. Hear me. There is nothing more powerful than a personal testimony. To say, I came and I saw for myself that God opens doors. Financial doors. Spiritual doors. Career doors. Do you believe what I'm saying? 
I'm saying this because we're, we're stepping into a session of prayer now minister to you now but this is the most important thing you need to get doors can open say that after me doors can open one more time doors can open yes sir they can not under every condition not under every condition grumbling in ignorance does not open doors remaining there like the man at bethesda one year will become 38 and nothing happens time does not change anything engaging the forces of victory is what brings victory to the believers if time ever had the ability to change anything time only reveals time does not change anything one year became 38 for a man who was waiting for time the day you become angry in the spirit and say today is that day i am tired of standing before closed doors as a man of god tired of standing before closed doors are we together so ladies and gentlemen we are going to pray and in that prayer i'm going to be speaking over your life the chains that held peter that have held many people in this place tonight is about to give way I want to speak by the Spirit of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not speak like arrogant men. Even though our words sound like arrogance, it is because we have a mandate to speak his purposes to the nations. And under this grace, woe betides a doubter. Woe betides one who says, you? No. When men are under the unction that their office commands, you listen. They speak by the Spirit because it sustains the power to swing the two lip gates of nations hither and thither i truly believe that ghana is in a prophetic season a defining moment spiritually politically perhaps economically and in every sense of it and for the next five minutes we are going to invest prayer and your prayer point is simple all doors open all doors not some man of God all doors doors of revelation doors of influence doors of power all doors doors of health doors of longevity are you ready to pray whether you are standing or sitting it does not matter the most important thing is to pray everyone say father come on shout it Ghana say father in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by your power all doors open go ahead and begin to pray all doors all doors all doors all doors Arikas kobrende gete pere susiata. All doors open. All doors open. All doors open. By the force of light open. By the force of light open. By the force of prayer open. By the force of favor open. By the force of the prophetic open. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorified go ahead over your destiny all doors come on please don't be silent doors open for the sake of his majesty doors open a father 
doors open doors open someone pray someone pray someone pray Someone pray. Pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are still praying. 1 Corinthians 16. And verse 9. Please give it to us. For a great door. And effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. There are no mountains without giants. No. The door that opens you to destiny. Will already have giants there. It is your ability to sustain the power. To dislodge the giants and to prevail are you ready to pray say father by the authority that is in the name of jesus i decree and declare every mountain and every giant stand in my way give way now go ahead and pray give way now give way now give way now every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. hallelujah in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ every time a door is closed it will slow you down in life and destiny now we're going to do this very fast i hope i don't stretch more than the next 10 minutes or so but i want you to please participate we're getting into a very prophetic session now and I see people right to the back. And let me assure you, no matter how far behind you are, this one, this prayer I'm praying, you will not escape it in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion there shall be holiness, deliverance and holiness. Then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. I want to pray. When I came into this place, and after sitting down while the ministration was happening the lord opened my eyes and i saw like stones were put together and i saw fire coming out of them and when i saw this i had in my spirit witchcraft and this is what i kept hearing that there are families that have been bound by the covenant of stones bound to the earth Job said, in six things shall he deliver you. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. And that it will not hurt you because you have a leak with the stones. The earth is one of the elements that God gave man dominion over. It should not be used against you. Among the many things you were given dominion over, the five elements of the supernatural, the earth is one of them. That means you should not invoke the powers of the earth and use it against men the psalmist said the sun shall not smite you by day there are powers that depend on these elemental forces and i want to pray and release someone now i'm going to ask you to shout the name jesus and very quickly within the next two minutes those under the anointing i want you to bring them out here please make sure that you maintain thank god for the protocol so that you don't interrupt our dignitaries let's just keep them position where they do not interrupt the dignitaries but I pray for you for sure someone's captivity I, I decree and declare 
at the count of three now listen to the instruction at the count of three you are going to shout Jesus three times once I pray then you will say Jesus Jesus and by the third time the power of God will come upon you everything that has held you and held your destiny down if God be God in this place and this night it must give way are you ready father you gave gifts to men and you are anointed us to be channels of deliverance to nations and to territories I stand before your people even this beautiful nation of Ghana there are destinies there are men who have been held by the power of witchcraft kept down so that they do not move the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem against Judah and against Israel so that no man will lift up his head but tonight I come as a carpenter by the power that raised Christ from the dead at the count of three everyone here who is a victim of ancestry bloodline witchcraft orchestrations of that power he must let you go right now Ghana are you ready to shout in the name of Jesus after the count of three one two three shout Jesus shout Jesus shout Jesus now release your destinies now release your destinies now release your destinies now bring them out in the name of Jesus let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall upon every manipulation of witchcraft every orchestration please help the ushers whether you are an usher or not bring them out by the power of the Holy Ghost I release your destiny tonight I open up that door we are still praying give way give way by the spirit of the living God give way who is this king of glory he says the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle I stand as one sent by God that every force tying down destinies that will not let Ghanaians rise will not let you shine in the name of Jesus the captain of our salvation be delivered now be delivered now hallelujah while still praying the Lord is opening my eyes in the spirit and I'm seeing the feet of people having chains chains not the hands but the feet and they are unable to move in the name of Jesus everyone under the sound of my voice that has been held by chains of ancestry in the name of Jesus chains break chains break chains break chains break in the name of Jesus chains break chains break over destinies chain break over families chain break over businesses in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah the Lord is ministering to me that there are families that no matter how educated they are the doors of employment never comes so you find people within that family but doors are not opening I stand here tonight by the spirit of grace and prophecy I don't know who that person is but I declare that door opens for you now just hold him and, and hear me I'm hearing in my spirit rebuke the spirit of untimely death the spirit of untimely death 
Ah, there are families here. Every year someone must die. Patterns of death have been sent by the Spirit. I want to declare now, anyone here that the hand of death is upon, that you will not enter 2024 by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, grave, where is your victory? asking me to do something very prophetic for these groups of people you don't have to bring them out there are prophetic intercessors hold that gentleman and just keep him there there are prophetic intercessors hear me men and women who will begin to rise from Ghana prayer groups prayer cells people with mantles that will pray the program of God not everybody women who understand the art of the altar and men who can pray I don't know who that person is but I stretch my hands from here may that mantle of a prophetic intercessor right now let it fall upon you Parakatoskiata help them let it fall upon you I release upon you the mantle of a watchman the mantle of an intercessor the grace to stand upon your watch in the name of Jesus over territories In the name of Jesus. Now let me pray for those who are out here. Father, every one of these precious people who are out here, it is because you are delivering them from yokes of darkness. Delivering their families. This is why they came. Therefore, I decree and declare that every legal access that the devil has by the blood right now, this moment, that legal access is hereby broken 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 release their families now release their destinies now in the name of Jesus I speak to you by the spirit of grace that the calamities and the pharaohs the captivities that you have seen before now you will see them no more forever in the name of jesus christ those who are strong enough can get up and return to their seats rejoicing give jesus a big hand clap now listen ladies and gentlemen please hear me hear me I hear in my spirit strengthen the weary. This is particularly to men and women of God in ministry. I sense in my spirit that there are men and women of God who are here, but they are weary. It looks like serving God does not seem to have any advantage again. And some of you are about to give up. The Lord is sending me to speak to you by the spirit. Please hear me. I want you to know that the Bible says there is hope for a tree, even if it be cut off. He said, at the scent of water. At the scent of water. I'm speaking to a man of God. You have come too far to give up. You may have walked in error, but the key is not living ministry. The key is having some time with Jesus. A reconsecration again. And to begin your walk with Jesus with authenticity and genuineness. 
For some, you may need to dissociate yourself from wrong, ungodly associations. But God is giving you a new beginning. By all means, a new beginning. Let me pray for those who are sick. You don't have to come out. At, we're out of time because we need to pray on the request. And then I speak over you and I'm done. But if you are sick in your body, that includes those following online. I want you to lay your hands this moment. Lay your hands. Believe in the Jesus that heals. I want to pray for you right now. Right to the back, the left to the right, everywhere across this beautiful auditorium or this beautiful theater, this, this, this outdoor construction. And for those who are following online, Jesus is giving you an opportunity. Lay your hands. Go ahead. You are trusting God for a healing miracle. Jesus wants to heal you right now. There are people who do not believe in the healing ministry. Perhaps because of some of the things that have happened around. But I want to assure you by the spirit of grace that Jesus still heals. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he's about to heal someone now. Place your hand if it's your chest, lay your hands there. If it's your head, lay your hands there. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. I'm about to pray for you right now. And someone following from your home, your office, wherever it is, you're trusting Jesus for a miracle. He wants to come to you now as the great physician, even the healer, in the name of Jesus. I want you to agree with me, shouting a loud amen as I begin to pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Father, I pray right now over this beautiful nation of Ghana, over your people, here represented and many who are following by way of television and internet. It is your desire to see your people healed, agile, healthy, and many have sadly been plagued by sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities. But I come in the name of Jesus tonight, for the Bible says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about healing all day that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I rebuke every spirit that is back of infirmities, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be healed now. Be healed now. I bring you life and healing now. Migraine headaches be healed. Cancer be healed. HIV be healed. Blood conditions be healed. Any failed organs in your body, your heart, your kidney, your liver, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. Eye conditions be healed. Ear conditions be healed. You are here and you came with a crutch or whatever it is you cannot walk, begin to check yourself now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life to your bones by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Life to your bones by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Life to your hands. Life to your limbs. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke rheumatoid arthritis. In the name of Jesus. Ulcers be healed now. In the name of Jesus there is someone you have like a swelling around the groin area this is what the Lord is showing me right now the power of the Holy Spirit is touching you bringing you life and bringing you healing the Lord is showing me a lady you have this is not just a lump but it looks like you can literally feel a big mast around the left side of your breast in the name of Jesus, as I pray for you now, may that devil leave your body now. Fibroids and all kinds of growths, I command that they die now. 
prostrate cancer I call you by name and I curse you by the God of heaven there's someone you have a problem is a problem that affects your entire respiratory system this is what God is showing me particularly your ability to inhale air you have a problem I don't know what that problem is medically but in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to you right now may the power of God touch you right where you are 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 in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone you have a severe pain around your shoulder around your shoulder the power of the Holy Spirit is touching you right now bringing you life and bringing you healing in the name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be healed now shout a louder amen Ghana be healed now can we pray over the request now Philippians chapter 4 has everyone submitted their request who is yet to submit their request hallelujah I want us to pray Philippians chapter 4 please give us verse 6 the Bible says be anxious for nothing the word careful there is the word anxious I'm about to pray now it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request the request for a job the request for peace in your home the request for that which you seek that the Lord does for you let your request be made known unto God you have made it known unto men you have made it known even unto naysayers but the assignment is that you make your request known unto God I'm about to pray I am a testament of answered prayer unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come I'm waiting just a few more minutes so that we do not stretch ourselves beyond necessary but the God of heaven is about to arise your prayer request is the most accurate representation of your desires even if I prophesy to you we see in parts and we're limited by that which we cannot see but this is that which you wrote by yourself some of you have written impossible situations here I want to pray for you there is a God that answers prayer God is not a man that he should lie not the son of man that he should repent if he says it it is within his power to make it happen I'm about to pray now may I request that you stretch your hands towards the ark as a sign a point of contact while I call upon the God that answers by fire right I pray now spirit of the sovereign Lord come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the reason Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the reason, Lord. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. 
Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. I'm hearing in my spirit the book of remembrance is opening. The book of remembrance is opening. The book of remembrance. People who have forgotten you. In the name of Jesus, we are praying already. Just help those under the anointing. You don't have to bring them out again. Father, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. You have granted us grace and mercy to be stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom. You have granted us the privilege of apostleship and the grace to speak over nations and over destinies and territories. Father, I stretch my hands over this that represents the pain of your people. This that represents their frustrations. This that represents their predicaments, their calamities. That which has become an impedance to their advancement. The Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have, that when we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Therefore, Father, I pray upon this request, let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall in the name of Jesus Christ. That every prayer request here represented, may it be turned to testimonies this moment. Come on, shout amen. May it be turned to testimonies this moment. Can I prophesy over this? That these Egyptians you see today, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. Hear me. Every helper of destiny who must come under divine alignment to make for the answers of these prayers, wherever they are across Ghana, I prophesy to the north, the south, the east and the west of Ghana, I gravitate your helpers towards your destiny. Cases of marriage and family life receive answers now. Cases of finances, debt receive answers now. Cases of career, destiny, ambition receive answers now. Cases of ministry receive answers now cases of health receive answers now cases of oppression receive answers now legal matters receive answers now provided it found its way into this ark i agree with the god of heaven the same hand that wrote this request may it be the same hand that receive the answers one by one by one by one hallelujah can i speak over your life now prophecy is powerful in the name that is above all names to my left and to my right to the front and to the back I stand as one sent by God and I decree and declare every door that has been closed over your destiny provided it is called a door I cry to the God of my covenant and this moment I command that that door opens now hear me by reason of your coming to this place any man that fights you goes down instantly pastors apostles prophets great men in ministry by the spirit of the living god may a thousand cubits be measured for you in the spirit greater dimensions of exploits in the name of jesus exploits of salvation exploits of transformation 
exploits of rebuilding broken walls after the order of Nehemiah in the name of Jesus Christ can I pray for businessmen in Ghana my Bible says when men say there is a casting down I speak to every one business person here in the name that is above all names between now and the next three months I call upon my God who is also your God may he open strange doors for you may he open strange doors for you in the name of Jesus Christ can I pray for students can I pray for students father upon the campuses in Ghana alongside their intellectual advancement let the fire of revival fall upon the campuses let the fire of revival fall upon the campuses let mighty men and women arise by the spirit in the name of Jesus now hear me the spirit that destroys families tearing father and mother apart tearing children apart tearing family life and structure apart I decree and declare to that spirit we banish you out of Ghana in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and declare that from today we measure the entire circumference of the nation of Ghana and we declare it is a no-go area for you from tonight I don't know what you have lost some of you have lost time some of you have lost things some of you have lost relationships some of you have lost opportunities but I call upon the God who restores in the name of Jesus I shout by the Spirit restore 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 Do you believe in the favor of God? In a way you have never seen. In a way you may have never experienced. If it is true that what I taught you is not a lie. And it is not deception. I call upon my God. The mantle of favor that you have never seen in your life. May it rest upon you now. May it rest upon you now. May it rest upon you now. I understand there are other churches aside from Action Chapel that are here gathered. This meeting is beyond just Action Chapel. It is a meeting for the body of Christ in Ghana. Therefore I speak. Every spirit that wants to destroy the power and the strength of the body of Christ over Ghana, I stand as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ and I decree and declare, Father, fresh fire upon the church in Ghana authentic spirituality with character with integrity and with grace I pray for all the wounded servants of God in Ghana the grace to come back the grace to bounce back I pray for all those who are standing around the corridors of compromise the grace to be restored to authenticity in the spirit in the name of Jesus My final prayer for Ghana my final prayer for Ghana father this is a land and this is a nation that loves you and calls upon your name I am praying in the name of Jesus that no generation will arise from Ghana that rejects Jesus listen to what I'm saying parents listen to this may it never be that in your lifetime you will see a generation arise that will corporately push Jesus out of Ghana. I am a respecter of all faith. I have friends that are Muslims. I have friends that have other faith practices. I respect people. I respect whatever faith orientation. But I have an assignment by God. I am an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore I decree again. By the spirit of the living God may there be no generation in Ghana 
that will arise and reject Jesus Christ hear me the spirit of irresponsibility that wants to tie the young men down so that they are not productive wasting their lives away I decree and declare we banish that spirit from Ghana shout a loud amen Ghana your sons will not be armed robbers your sons will not be corrupt people I pray for the daughters in Ghana may they rise with the strength of Deborah they will not be prostitutes in the name of Jesus Christ since we have people who are heads of government here please let me and let me speak over the government in Ghana I declare the blessings of the Lord over the government in Ghana all the arms of government the wisdom and the grace to administer justice and to do that which is needful that leads this nation to her heaven i prophesy it upon you the grace upon the leaders from the presidency to your members of parliament down to the least keda receive grace and wisdom in jesus name father we thank you for tonight in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that every prophetic declaration, by the way, the mantle and the grace needed for the next level of your spiritual adventure, whether it is prophetic, whether it is apostolic, whether it's entrepreneurial, in the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus two more functions and I'm done the greatest miracle that can happen to this in this place tonight beyond healing beyond deliverance beyond transformation by the word is the salvation of your soul please hear me ladies and gentlemen in order of divine priority God's mandate even for this program is to see to it that among the thousands of people here gathered and the many more following online, that everybody has a chance to make Jesus Lord of their lives. I want to take one minute from my time that is left to make a very desperate call from a sincere heart that loves you truly and passionately. You are in this place, right to the back as far as my eyes can see, and you have never made a genuine decision for Jesus. Perhaps you've even attended all the days and yet the spirit of God whilst I was speaking is convicting you that now is the time to make it right with Jesus. Wherever you are, I'm going to make two calls in one. You are saying, Apostle, if you give me an opportunity, I will rush to come and make it right with Jesus. Or you are saying, I remember making this call before, but right now as it is, my life has gone haywire. I need restoration and rededication i'm going to count one to five wherever you are many of you will be coming from a very far distance i want you to run literally run and come and make your way to the front do not wait for anyone to come before you start coming as soon as i begin my counting one to five tonight is the night of salvation the door himself is calling you the bible says i am the way the door speaking i am the truth and I am the life. It says, no man cometh to the Father except by me. I begin my counting now. At the end of the fifth count, then I pray. Wherever you are, please don't kneel. Stand so that there will be space. Are you ready now? Let's celebrate them as they come. One. Two. Don't sit back when the Spirit of the Lord is convicting you. This is a new day. Ghana, are you celebrating salvation? Three. Someone is running to Jesus. Someone is rushing from the back. You have given things of lesser value. Your life, your time, your dedication and your commitment. Jesus calls you. Come. Come. I will worship him forever, love him forever because this God is too good. Oh. 
I will worship him forever, love him forever because this God is too good. Oh. You're joining them, you have 10 more seconds. Come. Come. Jesus is worth your dedication, worth your commitment. This is what this is all about. I'm the apple of his eyes. The thought that fills his heart every morning, noon, and night. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. With all due respect, let me speak to men and women of God here. Never cheapen and downplay salvation. Never exalt miracles above salvation. Never exalt prophecy above soul winning. Never exalt giving above soul winning in order of divine priority the greatest miracle the greatest expression of love for jesus is to see soul saved everybody jesus healed still died everybody jesus delivered still died what gives you access to life eternal is not healing it's not deliverance it's not money it's not breakthrough it's not ambition. It is Jesus. Perhaps this is a prophetic word for someone. A great sincere man of God. You may need to revisit the issue of having a genuine passion for the lost. We live in a world where we have cheapened the whole idea of salvation. If miracles happen here and no soul is saved, we still say it was a great meeting. No. No. The measure of greatness in the spirit is the degree to which many eventually this is why he gives grace for the miraculous every other manifestation of the spirit should eventually lead men to the cross even to Jesus hallelujah thank you ladies and gentlemen for summoning the courage to come and stand before Jesus in the presence of your entire beautiful and lovely nation Here's what my Bible says. As many who will come to him, that he will in no wise cast away. God laid it in the hand, in the heart of his eminence, to put forth this prophetic convocation and look the harvest that has come because of one man's obedience to Jesus. To Jesus. Someday, we will be in heaven. And when I turn to my left or my right, I will see someone smiling at me and say, but I do not know you. And you will say, you do not need to know me. The only thing you will tell me is, I am so glad you came. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you came before I pray for these people I want to say thank you to every sincere and every true man of God and woman of God that has labored and continue to labor in the nation of Ghana for the gospel. Seen and unseen. On air, on TV, or otherwise. Leading a crowd of people or leading a few people. The church is a light in any nation. And I want to tender my salutations even on behalf of Jesus, the captain of our salvation, for the one person who prayed and still prays for the one person who gave and still gives for the one person who invited members to church and continues to invite for the intercessors that may never be seen who pray day and night that his program comes to pass for the ministers who labor day and night shelving away their own pain to see that the program of God does not fail may the Lord bless you and may the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus brothers and sisters please lift your right hand high above your head say this after me before Jesus the one whom
you stand before not Joshua Selman the one who is greater the one who called us say Jesus tonight I declare that I love you with all my heart I declare that you are the son of the living God I declare that you are my king you are my savior you are my Lord from tonight and forever I declare my life is yours the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never amen father thank you for these blessed people who have come declaring your lordship over their lives i pray in the name of jesus that the grace that keeps may that grace keep them i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god and i declare over you that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name hang on for a minute please bring this little boy for me there is a very little boy that i see here i am so touched and honored come this is a very very little boy i saw him kneeling and joining in the prayer come my dear son look at this i don't know whose son this is but what a miracle i believe that this boy is representing the next generation of people who love jesus in ghana I was so touched while others were praying how old are you eight. you are eight years eight. what is your name edwin. edwin do you believe in jesus yes. listen to me i pray that god will make you a mighty man of god that someday you will stand like i'm standing now and you will preach jesus to the nations that someday this young boy i do not know him that god will announce him to the nations let me encourage the parents and the family of this boy train him well let him represent i believe that his coming is a prophetic message to ghana that you will not lose your future in the name of jesus and i pray for you i pray for you that you will love jesus that you will do well in school that you will be an obedient young boy that God will find you like he found Samuel and you will be a mighty vessel in his hand may God bless you in Jesus name give him a big God bless you hallelujah now for all of you who are here please may I request that you move this way to my right which will be your left the counselors will have a word with you very quickly and then you are back to your seat let's honor them as they go very quickly hallelujah I have the honor one last time okay let's receive the offerings again like we did yesterday it's time to give our offerings I have the honor to receive our offerings one last time before we're done please package your offerings very quickly and then I speak over them this will be my final assignment by the way I was talking with his eminence while I sat down and he did tell me that on Sunday there will be a prophetic impartation a tripartite impartation I think he was telling me uh, that is reflective of the teaching that I taught by the way if you were not in the morning if you are not around in the morning to listen to my teaching please do well to make sure that you get the materials and listen to it I taught how the grace especially to prosper comes that it comes upon your head it comes upon your hand it comes upon your feet your head giving you illumination and insight your hand blessing the works of your hand responsible for productivity and then your feet guidance and direction hallelujah I apologize if this is out of my jurisdiction but every time I see them I always want to appreciate them I understand these gentlemen holding and women holding the veils represent some of the intercessory team in this ministry may I please request that we honor these marvelous gentlemen and women please give them a big god bless you 
I know that this is a ministry committed to prayer and I've had the honor of praying with some of them at the prayer mountain last I was here and they are amazing gentlemen and ladies marvelous intercessors I have seen them pray I know they can pray may God bless you my brothers and sisters that you've continued to fan the prayers the ambers of the prayer altar praying for his imminence praying for this ministry and for the program of God you will not fall you will not fail you will not falter in the name of Jesus are you ready with your seats please let me request one last time that you rise so that we speak a blessing upon our giving and then my assignment is done over the beautiful nation of Ghana father in the name of Jesus we thank you for the word that you have brought thank you for the miracles the healings thank you for the deliverances thank you for speaking to our concerns thank you for helping us understand the mystery and the dynamics of open doors thank you for the marvelous testimonies that follow even after tonight father i bring before you your people alongside their givings i pray in the name of jesus that you accept their hearts first and then their givings whether giving physically or giving electronically whether on ground here on site or by way of the internet in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your seeds that my God will bring multiplication in the name of Jesus Christ may you never go down even financially as a result of your giving may God raise men even men that matter to help you rise to help you be, to be established in life and destiny I rebuke the devourer for your sake there shall be no loss for you that when men say there is a casting down for you and to every giver here represented may you say there is a lifting up and in the name of Jesus the remaining 30 days thereabout that are is remaining to wrap up this year 2023 may every day after tonight be a day of miracles for you in the mighty and much less name of Jesus we pray Ghana I love you with all my heart thank you so very much may the Lord increase you and in advance Merry Christmas and a very happy new year thank you Quiet, quiet, quickly, quickly, quickly.